navigation in the description below. So I wanted to make a tutorial about banding ingredients in videos. Back in the days of Flash video, this wasn't as big of a problem because you could actually zoom in as far as you wanted, and your gradients would still look perfect in so far as 24-bit color can render them. But in the days of video, even at 4K, look at all that banding. Oh my gosh, it is hideous. Let me take a screenshot of this and show you in Photoshop. All right, check this out. Uh, we're gonna go to, yes, use legacy, contrast, way up, brightness. Let's increase it until, oh my gosh. This is what you're dealing with, with online video. Banding, bandy, band, band, banding. Now there's two kinds of banding. There is the, kind that happens because you only have 256 values to work with. And there's also the kind that happens because of something called full swing, uh, which is basically every seventh value is being skipped if you are only working with pure grayscale. But if you're working with colors, actually it's more than every seventh value that gets skipped. Like basically you can see that we have what I would call like a super band right here. And there's another super band right here. See that? Yeah, it's quite, look at that. It is quite obvious when you look at it like this. You can see every single super band. Boom, 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 boom. It's like tree rings. Look at this. You can see every single one. I think it looks terrible. The small bands I can deal with because that's just the limit of 24-bit color. But the large bands I absolutely hate because there's no practical reason that I can think of for them to exist. I will explain what's going on shortly. For the time being though, the question we have to answer is how can we diminish the effects of this? So here we have this bionic beaver background. And the only band that you are supposed to be able to see is this one right here, right in the middle. And I think there's actually another one like kind of right here, but it's very, very subtle. If I do the same trick over here, let's uh, adjustment, brightness, contrast, use legacy, increase the contrast enormously. Okay, that's too much, obviously. And then I can move the brightness around to look at different parts of the image. You can see, indeed, this is supposed to be here, this band here. Oh, there's another one down there. And this one is supposed to be here. In fact, they failed to line it up properly. Interesting little factoid. Um, and this is a PNG, so we don't have any issues with JPEG compression. We can see that the banding is very uniform. Okay, it's supposed to look like this. Every single band has to do with 24-bit color, which is often erroneously referred to as 8-bit color. 8-bit color is literally just these. These are all the colors you have to work with. Today we use 24-bit color. Basically, you just you have these three values, red, green, and blue. These are channels. You can go all the way up to 255. There's 256 values because zero is a value. And this is how you create all the different colors uh, that you can see, right? Just varying amounts of those three things. So because there are only so many values, you will see them if you have a shallow gradient or if you zoom in a bunch or if you greatly enhance the contrast like I have. What I'm looking at right now actually looks better than what you are looking at. From where I'm sitting, I cannot see any bands on here at all. What you're looking at is significantly worse and I'm about to show you the difference. Uh, so let's take this image. I'm just gonna export this to MP4. And it doesn't matter how high I set the bit rate. I will have the same problems. Ignore this for now. I'm gonna render at maximum depth. I'm going to use maximum render quality. Let's give this like way more bits than it could possibly need. Oh no, man, that's not good enough. Let's do high. Let's do fricking six point, wait, unrestricted. Is that new? I don't know what that is. Let's try it. I'm, whoa, I'm kind of terrified right now. I've never done that. Holy crap. Okay, let's see what happens. 
Okay, it's literally just this PNG. And I've given it so many bits. I've given just huge bit rate, way more than it could possibly ever need. Unrestructed, whatever. I'm clearly, clearly not able to spell. Okay. Let's see if we have the same issue. Aha, uh -huh, I see banding. Yep, that's got banding, and this one, the original, does not. Now, you watching at home, you are probably thinking, what are you talking about, Taryn? They both look the same. And also, if I look down here at your Lumetri scopes, why, the scopes look the same as well. Just about the same. There's a little bit of differences, but almost the same. Well, not even Captain Disillusion knew about this one. Let me show you the tweet thread. Uh, I guess I'll link to this in the description or whatever. I didn't know about After Effects' waveform being a liar unless it switched to float. Gonna keep it on float from now on. What is he talking about? Let me show you. Here's the waveform, and here's the setting. Float. Watch this. Ta-da! This is what I'm actually looking at. The perfect gradient with no banding. And if we go to what I exported, the bands appear. And let's go back to 8-bit, actually. Oh, those are very different looking bands. Huh. Let's go not unrestricted. Let's just see, because I've never, I've never done that before. Let's go high. I don't know what high 10 is either. Let's try this. Uh, test 2. Export. Test 2. Wait, what? You're kidding me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me that's got them all. What? High 10 does it? Wow, I was just bitching about all the banding that happens, but it turns out high 10, not so bad. Wow, I had no idea. You can see the blue is kind of shitty on the green, but I haven't even explained to you. I haven't even given you the context for understanding what's going on here yet. You know what? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that is what it usually looks like. <laughs> Update from Future Terran. Yes, in fact, that level of banding is normal because, as I said earlier, uh, you should expect to see more banding in color than you will see in just a pure black and white gradient. That's just how it works. We got to keep this as simple as possible or we're never going to get done here. I've got a 1080p black to white gradient. Okay, this is just pure, pure and perfect. You can see here on the scopes, and the scopes are in float mode. If they're in 8-bit mode, they're going to give you the wrong result. That's not what it actually looks like. Don't do that. Float mode. You can see that we've got one bit that's out of place. That's a zero. It's actually supposed to be down here, but it's up there. It's a little bit weird, and I think that's normal. But that's just how it usually is. I, I can't explain it. Whatever. So, let's take this and let's export it, okay? Let's give it maximum depth. Let's give it more bits than it needs. Yeah, max it out, why not? And export. Okay, we gave it the maximum bit rate at that level. Let's bring it back in and put it back into the same timeline. And now let's look at our waveform. Boom, what the hell just happened here? Let me make this more obvious. Let's create an adjustment layer, put that on there, and let's increase the contrast dramatically. Keep going, keep going. Okay, what do we got here? You can see very, very clearly the super bands. See those? Not only do you have doubled values, but you also have skipped values. And this is because of something called full swing. <laughs> Future Terran here. I don't know if it's actually called full swing, what's happening. Shut up. Because... Like, maybe full swing is what happens when you have it go to limited and then come back. Or maybe full is what happens if you don't go through this process at all. I don't know, man. The point is, somewhere along the line, your video is becoming limited and that makes it look bad. No matter what you do, even if you do it the correct way, it still results in your image being degraded no matter what. Okay, so to illustrate to you exactly what's going on here, 
I have already created in Photoshop this perfect black to white gradient, okay? Perfect, it's totally flat, everything is great. I'm gonna hit Control M, which brings up the curves panel, and I will show you what happens here. So basically, like when you create an MP4, the way that I guess broadcast works, or maybe it's Rec. 709, I don't know, they need some extra room to work. They need something called a filter overshoot. Because otherwise, I, I don't know, like the values get all messed up. They, it, they just need them for whatever reason. And the obnoxious, stupid thing that they decided to do was, instead of creating like, I, I would say like virtual values, like above here, and virtual values below here, and put your filter overshoots there, what they decided was, we're going to take it out of the image. The image that you're trying to display, we're just going to take that and we're going to clip it. We're going to clip it from 16 to 235. And that's your image now, except not really because they decided, okay, yeah, that does look bad. Let's not clip it per se. What we really need is every value like 16 and below, I think it's 15 and below, whatever, and every value 236 and above. We need those for our filter overshoots. So you, the person making a video, you are not allowed to use those. So we're gonna give you this partial range in between, okay? So that's your range. Now here's the problem. I don't have the deep blacks that I used to have. Look at the difference. Here's the color black that I want. Look, I'm, I'm getting nowhere near that. And when I do the same thing and I enhance the contrast to show you what's going on here, you can see that we have what I call doubled values. Because of the limitations of 24 bits, when we squished all the bits down, uh, there was nowhere else for them to go. They had to round themselves to the nearest available value. So it's roughly every seventh value gets doubled. It's like that the entire way through. Obviously, now you have muddy, like gray looking blacks and you don't have all of your whites and it just doesn't look good. So the second step is, okay, we're gonna transmit the video like this, but we will display the video such that 16 will now go down to zero and 235 will now go up to 255. So let's do that now. There we go. So now, congratulations, we've solved the problem, right? Now we have those blacks that we wanted. We have all the way to black and we have all the way to white. So what's the problem? Well, again, let's enhance the contrast. You can see now, not only do we have skipped values, but we also have doubled values. Actually, those are more difficult for you to see because every skipped value here is also a doubled value because I did it so perfectly. Let's actually go back. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to deliberately do this imperfectly. Let's go to like 15 and 231, whatever. And let me show you the result. You can see that the super bands appear to be brighter than the surrounding stuff over here. And they appear to be darker over here. Hmm, how interesting. Why that corresponds with what we saw here. Look at that. Super bands appear to be brighter and super bands appear to be darker, as I call them. Right? So even though it supposedly puts things back to where they were, it really doesn't. Uh, it, it's some kind of like not quite perfect result. But when you get a more subtle image like this one and you, you take that and you export it, it looks really screwed up. And you can see here on the Lumetri scopes that this one, this is our export. This is way more banded. Look at that. It looks awful in here. It looks all nice in here. And let's uh, enhance the contrast. And you can see just how awful the banding really is. And that's best case scenario. I'm not even seeing any macro block issues in here. Not yet. Let's grab the... Uh, screen capture that we got from Marquez Brownlee's video. Obviously, there's a bit of artifact in that you have to be okay with in order for your video to even go out into the world. Like, we can't just have a million bits per pixel. But IMO, this is too much. Anyway, the long and short of it is, we have awful banding. What do we do about it? Now, <laughs> 
you might think that we will be able to just blur the thing. Just blur it. Blur it and get rid of those bands, right? Look, oh, look at how smooth. Oh, it's so, oh, whoa, dude, you can see the, look at that. You can see the little beaver in there. Uh, you might think, oh, let's just blur the crap out of it. Well, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. You can still see all the bands. Now, I can't see them. They look good on my monitor because I'm watching this before it gets compressed. And again, it doesn't matter how high you put the bit rates. You're always going to have those super bands because that's just how MP4 works. And people are watching it in MP4. Okay? So screw you. Uh, just to prove it to you, just, you know, real quick. Export this. Re-import. And ta-da, look, there's some bands. So if you go online and you look for solutions to this problem, you're going to find people telling you that the solution is digital noise. We can see the difference between the two. This is with banding and without. Again, this might not show up on YouTube. But if you're delivering for YouTube, what's the point? Watch what happens when I add just a small bit of noise to this image. The banding is a lot less noticeable. Yeah, but now you just have noise all over everything. Create an adjustment layer. Let's put noise. So there's zero noise. There's 2% noise. Whoa, look at that. It smoothed out our little troughs in here. How interesting. So is this solved? Does that work? Well, no, not really, because if you look, you can still see the bands. You just also have noise. <coughs> okay, future Terran here. Listen up. I got a detail wrong. I was applying the noise onto an exported MP4. I should have been showing you what happens when I applied the noise to the original .png. So I'm going to show you that right now, and the difference is extraordinarily important. Uh, I'll get into that later, but I made that discovery during the course of creating this video. So uh, here we have 3% noise, and here's what happens uh, on the original. And um, there's noise, and then there's like moving noise. What you're looking at right now, the noise isn't moving, but if I press play, the noise is moving a little bit. I don't know if you can even see that. And here we have moving noise on the exported MP4 that's been brought back in, and now the noise is gone. So if you're going to use noise to try to fix a gradient, I would not use moving noise, like animated noise, because that's just going to effectively lower the amount of bits that you have available for other things. Um, either way, I don't think this looks any better. So if you want noise that doesn't move, um, you have to get an exported like image of noise just have your noise as a PNG okay uh, let's grab my 4k middle gray noise and put that on top of everything okay that is definitely even this is my layer of noise okay let's just put this to 2% okay so tell me can you see the bands or not I don't actually know I'm gonna have to take a look myself Okay, future, future Terran here. I know this is so convoluted. Uh, first of all, I should have used a blend mode, either multiply or screen, because I actually reduced the saturation of the final image. Um, aside from that, yeah, with the noise, I'm not seeing the banding anymore, right? But now I just have noise. At least I don't have noise and banding, but ultimately my conclusion is this is a good trick to know about, but I have yet to find a situation in which it really does seem to improve the quality of the video. So I'm thinking, what else can I do? And I ran some experiments. And I would like you to see the results of those experiments. It's actually quite interesting. Check this out. I tried a number of different sort of textures. Here's paint. Here's a more different paint at varying levels of opacity. And I tried triangles, and triangles actually surprisingly worked pretty well. But then, of course, you just have a bunch of triangles. Uh, these are just lines. Actually works decently, but now you have a bunch of lines all over the screen. Smaller, uh, well, you can see it. Okay, I don't need to explain. These ones uh, kind of work. The diamond kind of works. Um, I also tried that plus macro block dithering is what I call it. And those are coming in here. 
Uh, basically, I always noticed that the macro blocks are kind of all over the place, so I tried adding some dithering to those macro blocks. You don't know what that is. It's like 8 pixels by 8 pixels. Whatever, I'm not going to explain. Uh, anything that I tried with what I call macro block dithering just, just looked like bad compression. It just looked bad. But ultimately, what I settled on was the following. Pixel overlay, 10%. I think this looks pretty good. Literally, I took a photo of a screen and I tiled it and put it at 10% opacity and some blend mode and put it on top. And because what you're looking at is a screen recording, it kind of works to have fake pixels in there. See? They don't really look all that out of place. Now, hang on. If we look here, you can actually see some of the horrible banding coming back, but that's only because my fancy blurring method only extends to here. You see, there's no issues up until the fancy blurring stops working, but that's just because my key was bad. But everything inside of here, there's no banding, you guys. There's no banding. It looks great. I did not even make this to eliminate banding. It just happens to be really good at it. Let me show you what that overlay actually looks like. Whoa, that's kind of hard to look at. This is it. This is what I did. Literally just a photo. I kind of went overboard with this tool. Yeah, I, I, I made them like, brrr, I really made them bloom way more than they should have. So you can tell that these are actually clipped. Like you can just see right there, they're all, they're kind of clipped. And I did that on purpose, but yeah, maybe it wasn't the right thing to do. Okay, so that's it. And then what I did was I just took that and I replicated it several times in Photoshop. So here is, you can see the edges. You can see that I didn't quite do it perfectly, but it doesn't matter because this is only going to be at 10%. And the difference in brightness from here to here is less than 10%. So you don't, you don't see it. Let's zoom in all the way. And you can see that the pixels kind of survive. There's no such thing as a yellow pixel or an orange pixel. And they're not really consistent. But this was just automatically, you know, scaled for me. And when you zoom all the way out and you put it at 10% or like 5%, like it looks really good, I think. So I have been putting this on top of everything that is screen capture in Linus Tech Tips videos for the last several months. And nobody noticed. But even though they didn't notice, it still makes things look better. So here we have this thing, which is pure white. There's, there's, like, there's way more white here than even the scopes will, will tell you. So I take the pixel replicate and I put it on top. And obviously it just looks like that. So you go to multiply, and that also just looks absolutely terrible. Let me show you bringing that down from 100. You can see how the Lumetri scopes respond. Looking better, looking better, until we finally get to about 10. And uh, it looks great. I think it looks great. And if you really, really, really zoom in, then I will also make the pixel replicate overlay larger. I could even line it up so that the pixels are actually lined up to each individual, like, real pixel in the actual image. <sighs> now there's an additional problem, which is the way that Premiere handles scaling. It doesn't allow you to use nearest neighbor, which is exactly what I want to use when I'm dealing with screenshots. And more accurately, nearest neighbor pre-scaling, but a different type of scaling after that. And I'll explain this all later, but basically, the problem that I see on like every damn YouTube video I look at is that you have fuzzy pixels. Look at these. These look awful. Okay, that is not what your monitor looks like when you like look at it really closely. What are these fuzzy pixels? That looks like shit. It's darker here and then lighter there and then what? What's going on? Let's look at this in Photoshop and you'll see what I mean about how it looks so much better. Look at the difference. Let's get rid of the pixel grid. You can just see, oh man, it looks so much better. This looks like what it's supposed to look like. Although, technically, even this does not show what an actual pixel looks like. Because a pixel is three distinct sub-pixels, which is why sub-pixel rendering works. But that's not important. I would be satisfied with showing it like this. So what I'll do, 
um, for an image that I need to zoom in that far, I will actually pre-scale it in Photoshop. That's where I'll do my pre-scaling. Image size, I will say, like go to 400% and use nearest neighbor. Okay, pixel grid. Let's turn our pixel grid back on and you can see, ooh, what's this, Taryn? Your pixels have grown four times in size. Oh, gosh, golly, gee. That's because I don't trust Premiere to do the pre-scaling. I'll do it in Photoshop, and then the results I get are significantly less blurry like this. They will look a lot closer to this result right here. Um, that's a little Terran secret. It's not a secret. I want everybody to do it. <laughs> so... I, I've gotten way off track here. There's, oh, you guys, there's just so much. There's so much stuff to think about when you're making a video on a professional level. And I don't really know the order in which to tell you guys about all this stuff because it's all interconnected. Okay, and I could sit down and figure out like a lesson plan or something like that, but I don't have time. So I'm just going to keep talking. And if you care, you can keep watching. But I'm not your dad. I'm not your coach. I'm not your teacher. I'm just a guy um, talking about a thing that he's passionate about. So long story short, to solve this banding problem, you can use what I call a micro texture. And whatever your texture is, it should work with whatever the subject matter is. So I've also experimented with this brushed aluminum texture. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, I, I tried this one, obviously, that that didn't work. And, uh, hmm, you know what? <laughs> we can still see those bands, and now we just have brushed aluminum all over the place. Let's try rotating this, actually. And now, well, we don't have the bands that we had before, but we just have different bands. <laughs> yeah, macro block dithering, I just think it looks bad, but it does get rid of the banding. Now, here's something interesting that I literally just discovered. I have this exported MP4, which has these bands in it. And if I apply the pixel overlay on top of that, then I can still see the bands. But if I were to do that before I export, like this, then I think it would, it would like, take. So I actually don't know. Let's try it. And let's just export both of these. I don't know what's going to happen. So I've done little experiments like this. There, there have got to be hundreds uh, as I try to figure out stuff like this. And what you're seeing, like this video, like you're getting the answers to all of those tests. I also had to upload them to YouTube so that I can see what they look like on YouTube. Oh yeah, so here I'm experimenting with compression. I got a really interesting result where, like obviously like this looks like garbage, right? And then in the very next frame, only Linus's face actually looks horrible. Everything else kind of looks all right. I thought that these would be really screwed up by the uh, lack of bits. But in fact, this is within the cosine's ability to make this texture, this pattern. It like, doesn't require very many bits, so it does it like no problem. But this is like not a predictable pattern, so that is where you get the... Uh, the serious issues with, with lack of bitrate. It was just a really interesting result and something I did not expect. Let's play a little bit. There, now it looks a lot better. Um, and like, does any of this really matter? Well, sometimes it does. Sometimes it really does, but you don't know until you try. Anyway, uh, let's see the results of this experiment just now. Maybe an interesting problem delivery. I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay, so I can see the bands. And addition of the texture. Okay. Bands are gone. Wow. They are... What? They are completely gone. That looks perfect. It's perfect. I, can't, I don't even see the pixels. The hell? Wow. I don't even see the pixels. Like the fake pixels. Does this look as good to you as it does to me? Unbelievable. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so here it is. Whoa. Here it is without uh, anything underneath. And here, oh wow, I can see the bands. That is unbelievable. Look at this. You see, it's like it's an unexpected result, okay? So, wow, I cannot believe that. See what we just did? 
So that is the exported MP4 of this little experiment down here. I have the original uncorrupted, well, it's got a blur on it, thing with the pixel overlay. When it's exported, it looks bloody perfect. But if I take this and I export it to MP4 and then I put the pixel overlay and then I export that, it looks awful. You can see all the bands and it's the same thing. It's just a different order. I cannot believe that. That is amazing. Like what an amazing result. This is why you do the tests, okay? But the, like these are the fundamentals. Things that people won't necessarily tell you about. They don't necessarily know. They haven't done the legwork. Good heavens. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Order of export matters. So I guess what this means is that there is no rescuing somebody else's video. Hmm. If it's already been put into an MP4, you can't fix it. Right? Well, wrong. You might be wondering how I was able to isolate my fix onto just the background. As you can see, all of this stuff is still perfect. But I blurred the whole thing, right? No, I didn't. I keyed out all of this, this color here. And you can see because this color is very similar, you can still see that a bit of it got blurred um, when it wasn't supposed to. So, so what I'm working with here, so this is, what prop, this is what started the whole thing. And like I said, this whole video is completely out of order. Long story short, this screen recording right here is something that I got from Anthony. Okay, and it has this banding problem. And in the video that I made um, that included this bit of screen recording, I did not fix the banding issue. Nobody asked me to, nobody expected me to, you know, and I, and I didn't do it because I didn't have time. You don't have time to figure stuff out during the middle of the work day because I didn't know the answer. So let's reveal an explorer and see what project that was. Gaming on Linux part two. Okay, so you can go watch that if you want to see where this was used. But basically, like it looks just as banded and crappy as it does right here and now. So the question I asked myself was, how can I fix this specifically, this bit of video footage uh, that's already been rendered out? So let's just take a look. Let's see the exact footage I'm talking about. Let's put it right here. Go away. Put it right here and let's watch it. Oh, first problem, first problem. This is 1080p and oh my God, you guys, fundamentals. Fundamentals. Okay, listen to this. You're you're gonna if you're into video, like this will blow your mind. Okay, just so you know, there's no funny business. Here's that gradient from pure black to white that I've already shown you, 1080p. Here's a special graphic that I made, also 1080p, with a really, really shallow gradient. Here's the same thing that I made at 4K. All of these were made in Photoshop. Bring them into Premiere. Okay. First off, you can see this one's too small. We're in a 4K timeline. This one's too small, 4K timeline. This one is the right size. What happens when we take this one and scale it up? Look at the ghosts. What the heck is going on here? Well, turns out this, th and this is like gonna be a whole other video, by cubic scaling. This is actually not a good image to show you the differences. Okay, here we go. So here's what's happening. It's taking these pixels, and when it makes them bigger, it is deliberately making it a bit darker and a bit brighter on either side. Look, uh -huh. a bit brighter and a bit darker. It looks like it's not actually symmetrical. I would think that that would be symmetrical. And also, huh, it looks like this has its own issues with value doubling and value skipping, which is weird, but that's definitely probably not worth worrying about. So this this horrible mishmash of garbage is the result of that bicubic scaling. Basically what it's doing is it's kind of sharpening the image just a little bit. And this actually works pretty well for you know, live action video. It does not look good for computer graphics and like stuff that you've drawn. Like it, it makes it look bad. So for that, you want to, well, ideally create it in a 
larger resolution or the same resolution as you intend on showing it. Or if it's like pixel art, you want to use uh, nearest neighbor scaling, which uh, I'll, I'll make a whole video about scaling. But like, that's what I did. I used nearest neighbor scaling on this image, the 4K version, and it looks so much better. Well, do you see a difference between this and this? Honestly, you probably don't. Does it really matter? Maybe it doesn't really matter. But it can matter a lot. Not for this image. But this is a fundamental thing that you should know about. You can't just scale everything up inside of Premiere. Sometimes you gotta do it in Photoshop. And sometimes you gotta do it in After Effects if it's video. You gotta scale it up and then use like draft mode. Okay, but where was I? Okay, we're just gonna take this. We're gonna, well, let's actually not do that. Let's, let's watch this at native resolution. Here we go, we're on our source monitor. Okay, watch this clip uh, from start to finish. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to fix the banding problem without ruining this stuff right here and these things over here and this stuff in here. So long story short, and maybe you're a clever bionic beaver and you understand, oh, I know exactly how to key this out. That's easy, Taryn. Well, it's really not. It's not. Let me bring you through the entire process. It's actually shockingly complicated. So first of all, what you got to do is get your key. So key, what kind of a key did I use? I didn't use a key. Huh, that's right. I used Lumetri color, whatever. Okay, so I actually used secondary color correction. Um, and I did it that way because with a normal key, you can only choose one color. But with the secondary color correction, you can have a whole range. So you can actually have a gradient of colors. So I'm pretty sure I had to do it this way. So let's set a color and let's just see the result. Okay, add color. This is so inefficient. <laughs> Go all the way back over here. Where is it? Add color, click here. Okay, and now we can fiddle with these a little bit. And what I like to do is just like make it way too big, but let it envelop everything. There we go. Oh, hey, that's actually really good already. Huh. Uh, I don't want this on here though. This is, this is bad. This should be fully, uh, is it supposed to be white? Let me, uh, oh, we don't want gray. Let's make it obvious. Let's make it white. Whoa. There we go, black, okay. Um, how can I rescue this guy here? Nope, nope. And now we need to get a little bit more purple. The point is you make it just, just as large as it needs to be. So you can fiddle with these dials for a while, and uh, I don't actually have particularly good advice on the best way to do this. Like you can see that as I get this guy, I lose this guy down here, and I don't want that to happen. What did I end up doing? Let's just see our fully baked casserole over here. Okay, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, I just made a very, very specific area there. Okay, so this is what I ended up doing. Uh, don't show mask. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. So here's, uh, here's the critical piece of information. This is something that I didn't know, and it seems so obvious in retrospect. But I thought that this show mask little thingy here was just for previewing with. I thought that I had to turn it back off when playing the video. Like, oh, this is just so you can see where your mask is. You can't actually use that. Yeah, you can. Just leave it on. Leave it on and put it to black and white. So then what you do is you say, well, now I need to make a duplicate of that same thing and get rid of the Lumetri color. This will be our track mat. 
that? Matt. Matt Luma and put it on the layer directly above. There we go. Hey, not bad. So what we have now is the only thing that we're seeing is everything that's not the background. Cool, eh? So the reason we had to use a track mat there is because we just have the whiteness saying, here's what we want to see, but it has no color detail. Anyway, you, you might think that you can get away with doing color slash black, but you can't because your cursor is both black and white. And if you do it this way, then part of your cursor is going to be used as part of the mask. You're going to end up with a white cursor with no black around it. Uh, this will make more sense soon. So just do white, black, show mask and then allow another layer to be the actual thing that lets the color come through. Okay, so now what we have is everything that we don't want to blur. So now we need to do the same thing below for everything that we do want to blur. So let's just make those, you know, let's, uh, let's uh, disable those and let's do the exact opposite. I think all we have to do is just take the same thing and don't invert it. Okay, and Video four. Hey, there we go. Okay, so now we have all the things that we do want to blur. And again, like, you know, I, I can I can invert the mask. Yeah, and I just get the opposite. Like, it's real simple, right? Now, we do the blurring. Uh, b -b 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 blur. Blur, 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 blur. I'm actually not doing that good of a job of explaining exactly why I'm doing every single thing that I'm doing. And that's what I hate about some tutorials. They don't really explain. But it's actually, it's really hard. In this case, I've, I've tried many times to explain this in many ways. I've always failed. Okay, so we're blur a blur a blurring it. And as you can see, we're really smoothing out those bands. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, yeah, so much better. Okay, so now I have all this stuff totally blurred. Now, as I've already explained, even though this is super blurry, it's not going to appear blurry unless we put our pixel overlay on top. So let's go grab that little bit of magic. You know, I love just finding just the magical, the magical little answers. And now you know as well. So you put your thingy on top. Okay. And now let's make these visible again. And hey, looks pretty good. We managed to blur the background. We managed to get rid of the bands and we saved all of our stuff. Now let's watch it back and see if there are any issues. Watch it back. We're playing the video right now. Oh, well, that looks pretty ugly. Because our key does not extend below a certain threshold, everything beyond there is unkeyed and therefore looks hideous. So during this section of the video, you'd have to adjust the key. Okay? But let's keep watching. Blah, 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 blah. This looks pretty bad. That's got a glow around it. And here we are at the end. Okay. So the problem, if you haven't already noticed, is that there's this weird blackness around everything. Uh, this, is, this is a subtle thing that you, again, uh, this is a fundamental thing that you might never have noticed. When you blur and there's nothing there, you're, you're blurring into nothing, okay? And for example, when I use this Gaussian blur, like let's just make it simple again. When I do this, where are we? We're right here. I have repeat edge pixels on. If I turn those off, ooh, well, we get the same thing on the edges because guess what? There's nothing there to blur. You're just blurring into nothingness. And so the nothingness also creeps back where you don't want it. That's why we have repeat edge pixels, which is great, but we can't do the same for these edge pixels, because they're not on the edge of the frame. Premiere doesn't know what to do. Photoshop wouldn't know what to do either, but I know what to do. I'm creating a color mat. Okay. This color mat will be that color. Yeah, that's that's an orange mat. I've got this hideous rainbow, like four gradient thingy. I'm going to put this underneath my awesome thing and ooh. Ugh. Here, in these spots, you can see that is where the key shows through. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take this orange thing and put the orange thing underneath. 
and check it out. Ooh, that's much better than the black. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Now you could say that you're done right now. And you know what? If I was working on this during the workday, I've already put in way too much effort, like Captain Disillusion levels of effort, into making this look good. We can still improve it. Uh, because if you'll notice, I grabbed the color from here, so everything around here is going to look good. But the further out you go, the worse the extra color becomes. Yeah, and all the way over, all the way over here, you see this is more orange. That's more orange than it should be. So really what you want to do is you want to get a gradient, not just a solid color, but a gradient and put that below everything. So I'm just going to go do that. It'll be fine. Um, what I can do is I can just take this bionic beaver thing that I already have. Do I dare to just blur this? I mean, I guess I can. Let's just, let's blur it to the absolute extreme, like just so super blurry. And then let's enlarge it. And that's pretty good. Now, it's not perfect. We're not all the way up to that orange as we're supposed to be. But I think it's good enough. I mean, there are limits. Let's put that underneath everything. And hey, does that look better than the orange? Let's try it out. Orange background, gradient background. It looks better. And this, ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at right here, this is the final answer. This is the final, yes, this looks good. Yes, I'm okay with it. Uh, th this, this looks so much better than what we started with, which is, if I might remind you, wow, what a difference. What a difference. Now, okay, if you want to rescue our little beaver friend here, fine. Let's get our bionic beaver. Let's just put the beaver back. Okay, so he's going to look banded unless I put the pixel thing on. Okay, so this looks all right. Obviously, we've got some issues. There's uh, double icons. So what we'd have to do is, oh, geez. Why am I? Who cares? You're still watching. I don't know why. Let's, so you, do you see how there's like, you can put so much effort into a video, like chasing smaller and smaller details that no one will ever notice just to make things just 1% better at a certain point is not worth it which is why when I originally made this video I didn't do it but it is very very good to know because then you can bust out your skills on projects that actually do need them okay so this is this is actually really stupid an easier way to do this is just to go find the original background but I looked I looked I couldn't find it so let's just do the dumb thing, which is, oh dear, am I really going to do this? T, there we go. I've got a funny little bit of whatever here, but I just, at this point, I just don't care anymore. Very crudely kill that. And we can take our healing brush. <laughs> I love the healing brush. Look at how well that works. Healing brush. Ta-da. I can't change the spacing. Jeez, what a mess. Hey, it works. And uh, now we just have the beaver. Save. And let's go back into here. And let's take just the beaver. Beaver. Let's, uh, just for the sake of comparison. Okay. Original and restored. Original, restored. Oh, I'm actually, I lost the, uh, I could, you know, I could just get a solid and just crop it up there, but I'm not going to. And I could also re restore this. Jeez. So original, restored. By the way, I have this on multiply. I could also put it on screen and it would give me a bit of a different result. But either way, it's underneath this layer. So I could also, I could put it all the way up on top and then, huh. Even though it's above, it's actually not affecting the brightest whites. It's only affecting the darker colors because it's on screen. So I put it on multiply, then it will affect uh, the brighter colors more than the darker colors, I think. There's no one single right way to do this. Um, I, I, kind of, I kind of feel like the fuzzy beaver is my spirit animal. But maybe, 
he won't even survive compression as well. I don't know. Maybe this is a better result. <laughs> Just use the original thing. There's no need to blur it at all. But you know, if you wanna if you wanna blur, now you know you can't just blur. It really depends on what you're working with. There, there's there's a whole litany of stuff you can do, and uh, there's a there's a huge variety of potential problems, and uh, you won't always have the solution right away. Uh, by the way, this solution still does not fix the issue that happens right here. Oh god, that looks so ugly. It's awful. <laughs> like I said, you have to use a different uh, key for that part. And I have a fully baked casserole over here, where I actually did do that. So here's the solution. And bada boom. Wait, that looks ugly. Ugh. 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 Whatever, with some more tinkering, it would be very easy to solve that. Or you could just like cut, you know, just cut that little bit out, whatever. Um, you can tell, oh, okay, you know what? Like I could, uh, instead of doing it that way, I could just take this and just reduce the brightness of it using, yeah, there we go. In the video description, you will find the original source footage and both of my potential solutions to this gradient problem. So check that out for the final render of this. Uh, by the way, it is possible to do this without using like freaking so many layers, but this is the bad way to do it. Because if you look closely, so what I've done is I've just used color black rather than white and black so that I can get rid of one layer where the other layer is the track mat key. But it's a bad idea because look, the cursor doesn't have any blackness around it anymore. In fact, every single bit of black that's supposed to be in the original video is now part of the key, which is really bad. You do not want that. Um, and also, I obviously like didn't change up the, the key here. So this one looks terrible for a variety of reasons. Ugh. Uh, that, is, that is one of them. There you go. However, that is not the only way to get rid of banding in gradients. Let me show you something really cool that Photoshop can do, which Premiere can not. Let's go find ourselves a gradient. Um, yeah, let's go from 128 all the way up to 148. So very shallow gradient, okay. And this little thingy, I'm going to leave it where it is because it moves the center around. We will save that as our shallow gray dent. Lol. Okay, whatever. We've got two of them now. Okay, so I'm going to select half the screen roughly. I've already put these little uh, ruler markers on here. And plop that gradient down from here to here. Uh, something happened. Something happened. <laughs> Try that again. Boop. Okay. Now that one does not have any dithering. I'm going to move this selection down and I'm going to create one that does have dithering. As you can see, this is done directly inside of Photoshop. Click. Let's do the exact same thing from here to here. Okay. Let's go and add that contrast and saturation, contrast and brightness. Here we go. You can see the dramatic difference from one to the other. Look at how much better this looks even when I increase the contrast enormously. Well, not that enormously. Enormously. You, uh, you can hardly notice. So what they've done is it's RGB dithering. It's also known as NRAND, I think, and you can kind of see a bit of a pattern in it. I haven't seen that before. The point is they're using slight variations of red, green, and blue pixels. Yeah, see, at every single step, you have the most dithering happening there and then between the steps, you have the least amount of dithering. See, very clever. 
and it's RGB dithering. So I could actually, I could add a desaturation thingy on here and it wouldn't be as well dithered. Let's try it. Do saturation, put that on top and just say no saturation. Oh wow, that makes a big difference. Wow. Yeah, that's very, very subtle. You can hardly tell the difference. Anyway, the, the, the point is this is the ultimate in dithering your gradients. Like it looks perfect, perfect. Will this translate to video? Well, you're watching the video right now. Can you tell that this one looks more excellent than this one? Let's save this and export it and I will show you what it looks like when you enhance the contrast. Okay, let's plop this down on my timeline here. Uh, let's get my fake pixels in here as well. Put that on top. Use overlay, I guess. And put that to one, maybe two percent. Aha! Clip name on top so I know that it's on there. Let's just export this. One important thing to note about gradients is that they will have noticeable mock bands, is what these are called. Um, if the color change is too abrupt at any point. Uh, this is a thread on the Adobe forums that I found when I was doing research for this video. All of the replies were wrong or incomplete or misleading. Uh, nobody even used the word mock band because nobody seems to know what they are or what the real problem was. So I replied, I set the record straight, I explained how all this stuff works. So it seems that there's no option in InDesign to smooth your gradients, but even in Photoshop, the smoothing is not enough to get rid of those mock bands. Okay, let's go check out what we've just created. So I'll do these tests and I have to upload, uh, I have to upload the videos because I need to see what it looks like when it's been put onto YouTube. One really cool thing about gradients like this is that Photoshop for some reason is able to magically do a really good job of blending them together when you have competing gradients on top of one another. Uh, like this for example. This one we're gonna put it at like 20% opacity and then I'm gonna go in and increase the brightness contrast. Well, let's move one of them around and look what happens. Look at that. Look at how clever it is that it's only kind of showing up between the other ones. You see that? It's kind of amazing. Okay, here we go. We've got 1080p now. Yeah, the bottom definitely does look better. I can see every band here, there's one here, 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 but I cannot see them on the bottom. Huh. It does work. Let's see what happens when I add the pixel overlay. Ugh. Now that just looks worse. Let's take a screenshot. Bloop. So let's go to Photoshop and I'll show you what that looks like at enhanced contrast. Paste, enhance the contrast. Oy, 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 oy. That is ugly. Oy. Woo. <laughs> yeah. You can see some of the pixels made it through. Some of them did not. Wow. Let's compare that to the 1080p without the pixel overlay. Just paste that on top. Okay, oh yeah, oh, huge difference, huge difference. Now you might notice another problem, which is, whoa, where did all this color come from? What's with the blue and red? Yeah, man, I have no idea, I don't know, I don't know. Okay, we got 4K, excellent. Okay, so here's what I do. First of all, I will select 4K rather than letting it stay in auto, because even if it says 4K, if it's on auto, you don't necessarily know for sure. Full screen, use my shortcut to get that onto my clipboard. 
Back in Photoshop here, I'm going to paste that layer on top of everything else. Yes, that's that's it, because it has the stupid full screen thing. Okay, now let's go to the point where I had the stupid pixel overlay on top of everything. All right. Get that into my clipboard. We can exit out of here now. And paste that into Photoshop. Okay, so here we have with pixel o overlay mp4. Here we have just mp4 of the thing. And this one is the original. Okay, I don't need the hue saturation. Let's get rid of that. All right, so starting with the original. And we are at 100% scale. So this looks correct. One pixel per pixel. Very nice gradient here. Again, remember, that's with contrast enhanced. And it still looks pretty dang good. Now let's go to what happens when we export to MP4. That's not right, is it? No. It looks so much better before. What the hell is happening? Did it look better in 1080p? That can't be right. Let's go to 1080p. And grab that. I swear, every time I do these tests, even when I'm trying to show you guys something, I wind up with an unexpected result. Hmm, this one also looks terrible. What happened to the beautiful thing that I had before? You can see here that the difference between the beautiful gradient with the RGB dithering and the non-gradient is essentially nothing. In fact, this one looks, I would say, worse than this one. Let's try with the pixel replicate. Yeah, that, that just adds a lot of noise. But, you know what? Credits, credit where it's due. It keeps it looking as it is supposed to. Oh man, I had a whole point I was gonna make. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened, guys. I, I need to undo to get that back. Yeah, that's the screenshot that I took. That looked really good. What happened to this? Where did this go? I'm not crazy. What the heck? Oh, I said watch later. Oh, YouTube, you suck. Here are some other tests. I'm not seeing the good result in these either. Contrast way up. Okay, so on this one, on this one you can see some of the, what I call, macro block dithering, which has occurred, and that's a really nice result. I like that. I wish that I was able to deliberately have that happen on every single band. See? It's just a easier way of going from one to the other. I didn't put that in on purpose. That's just what happened when this one had the RGB dithering and this one didn't. Um, okay, so I have no idea what's going on here and, and why this looks so much worse than it did just a few minutes ago. That doesn't make any sense to me. This, that's, that's crazy. <sighs> but whatever. Uh, moving on to the next thing. Um, if I go into Photoshop, let's look at this image from Mark, Mark West Brown Lies video. If I increase the brightness and contrast, you can see all these horrible steps in here. Are these actually all that visible? Well, at the lowest values, your eye is actually more sensitive, so they are somewhat visible. Um, and if you try to blend these using, uh, yeah, using the blur tool or, or even just like a Gaussian blur, like it doesn't work. There's nothing that can be done. Look, I'm going to blur the crap out of this. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just just huge amount of blur. It doesn't matter. You're still going to have those bands because you are at the edges of what 8-bit color can do. Doesn't matter. So what I did instead was, first of all, I, uh, I took that and I removed the, where was it? I removed the saturation. And that way, because this is already grayscale, we just don't have to deal with, with weird color stuff going on. Let's see, let's check that. Yeah, that's, well, it's better, whatever. Uh, I, I wasn't able to capture the entire process, but so I isolated that section. I made the whole thing brighter using the curves tool. So something like this. Yeah, did that. Okay. 
and then you can blur it. And then you can add noise on top, and then you can use the curves tool to put it back to where it was. And the result, check this out, uh, here's the original image, and here is the improved image. Original, improved, original, improved. And we, when I put the brightness contrast on, you can see the enormous difference that it has made for me to use a bit of noise in there in order to completely smooth out those bands. Like, look at the difference. Way, way smoother. That's with the same number of discrete colors. So it only worked because I had all that headway and then I squished it back down. I don't know of any other way to do this, and you can't really do it for moving footage because you'd have to you'd have to go in and doctor up every single frame. It would be crazy. Also, you still have the problem of, yeah, maybe this looks good in Premiere, but does it look good when it's uploaded to YouTube? I guess I'm going to find out here after I upload this. I, I, I'm still not really sure how you can get rid of banding in normal footage like this. I just, I don't know. There, there should be an option in Premiere or After Effects that says, hey, please dither if there's going to be banding. Like, that's the real solution, and I don't think that Premiere has anything like that. Okay, by the way, this is important. I know that I said that I'm using the pixel overlay for screen capture footage to reduce the effect of the whiteness, but maybe I won't do that anymore. Maybe I'll just use Lumetri Color Correction instead, because... Some people have complained, they say that it looks like there's something wrong with the screen capture footage. Here's a problem that I noticed. Okay, so this part here with the it's easy, these faux pixels in here look really good at 4K, but when I go down to 1080p, they just become streaks. Hmm, that actually looked all right. Uh, I'm getting inconsistent results from YouTube again. Hmm, that's, okay, you know what, there are multiple kinds of 1080p. I swear there must be, because last time I tried this, it became a bunch of streaks. Ah, uh, okay, okay, I have to go find that footage that I got in 1080p. It's easy. <laughs> then... Oh my god. It's true! This looks way better than this. Exact same video, exact same frame, exact same resolution, 1080p, and they look dramatically different. This is the streakiness that I was telling you about, but it doesn't always show up at 1080p, so I guess YouTube is delivering different bit rates even at the same resolution, which means that a lot of my tests have been invalidated and the conclusions that I came to are potentially wrong and I'm going to have to do them all again. It never ends. And I swear, if I see anybody putting this pixel overlay on top of live action footage where it doesn't belong, you just do this? This does not look good. You are not fixing anything. You're making it look worse. Well, we gotta put this at 100. Even this does not look good. I will, I will come to your house and I will cut you. Today's episode is brought to you by Knives.